Hello and welcome to the Megabyte Monthly CEO Barometer. The idea of this show is that I uh, summarise the, all of the research and data that the Megabyte research team has collated and analysed during uh, the preceding month, try and pull together all of, the, uh, all of the themes and trends on that research and data and then try and extrapolate what that might mean for the outlook. December was another very busy month uh, for the team at Megabyte, despite the fact that obviously it was a, it was a short month with Christmas. Uh, particularly on M&A and, and corporate activity generally, there were 75 deals added to the, uh, the database that the team analysed and wrote on in, uh, in December. Um, there were 50 uh, results and trading updates that the team looked at in what is actually traditionally quite a quiet uh, period for results and trading updates and talking around those, uh, those uh, uh, deals and, uh, and results. The, the team had some 35 management conversations to drill into those in more detail and deliver insight to our subscribers. And indeed, um, as, as the analyst access part of our service where our analysts talk directly to customers about what they're seeing in the market in terms of companies and different, uh, different uh, parts of the technology sector and also do specific projects around M&A discovery, benchmarking, etc., the team completed another dozen or so assignments in, in December. Um, across all of those different uh, across all of those different categories, we've chosen to do a slightly different format for the uh, for, for the show this month. We've separated it into two uh, distinct videos. This one I'm going to talk about corporate activity valuations, uh, share price performance, uh, and uh, the the themes within that and the outlook. And then in a separate video, I will talk about company financials, company trading, and again, trying to pull together the key themes that we saw uh, during December and what that might mean uh, going uh, forward. Of course, both of these videos are really just meant to be a summary of what has been, uh, as I said, a busy month, and the team has produced a huge volume of data and research during that period. Of course, subscribers uh, get access to all of that research and data. If you are watching this video, you're not yet a subscriber, and you think that maybe uh, what we do at Megabyte might be of interest to you to help you run your business better, then uh, we'd love to hear from you. If you go to megabyte.com, uh, there is a uh, there's a request a demo tab at the top of the screen of the homepage, and uh, you can fill in a simple form, and one of our lovely customer team will be very happy to help you, and you may even join decide to join uh, the 200 or more uh, technology companies, private equity investors, and advisors that already subscribe to our service. So. Um, that's a quick overview of what we're going to be covering in this show and I'll go on to talk about uh, index performance next. So looking at share price and uh, index and valuation performance during December, as I mentioned at the top of the show, it was a really strong month again for markets. This comes on the back of November where uh, the uh, conclusion of the US election, or the sort of conclusion of the US, uh, US election, and the first uh, um, authorizations for the COVID vaccines buoyed the markets. Uh, despite a very significantly deteriorating COVID situation on both sides of the Atlantic, markets continued to be very strong. In, in December, the UK uh, tech sector, as measured by the Megabyte Universe Index, are around 100 technology stocks that we track at Megabyte. UK quoted technology stocks was up 8% in December, and uh, that meant that the valuation was up a similar amount. So the average EV EBITDA valuation for UK listed tech stocks on a weighted basis was um, tw over 21 times in, uh, in at the end of December 2020, up from just under 20 in the preceding month. When we look across ICT services and software, we saw, in, we saw a valuation expansion for both of those groups. Uh, software up from roughly from 25 to 26 times. That's an average EV EBITDA valuation for the current year. And uh, ICT and digital services up from 12 and a half to 13 and a half. And as I mentioned last month, software valuations had already risen back above their pre-COVID levels but ICT and digital services valuations were still lagging slightly behind pre-COVID levels. We've now seen that redress, that balance redress, and uh, ICT services valuations are now back to where they were pre-COVID. Looking across the Atlantic, the NASDAQ had a, uh, another very strong month. That was up 6% in December, and uh, you know that, that index, driven by the large tech stocks that have massively outperformed the Amazons, the Teslas, the Apples of this world, uh, has is now trading well above where it was pre-COVID, um, uh, whereas the UK tech sector is only slightly above where it was pre-COVID. 
The broader market as measured in the UK by the FTSE 250 was had another strong month. So as with November, the, uh, the, the market recovery was, was broad based in, uh, in, in, um, in December rather than being particularly tech led. And the FTSE 250 was up, uh, was up 6% in, in December. And uh, that is still below its pre-COVID level, but it topped over, tipped over 20,000 uh, 20, for the first time in the COVID era and is now only 10% below its pre-COVID high, the FTSE 250, which is kind of really interesting when you think about the impact of the broadly based, a very significant number of broadly based uh, companies operating predominantly in the UK during the COVID uh, era. So uh, really resilient performance there from the stock market, perhaps surprisingly. Uh, so that's a quick roundup of the, of, the, of the markets on both sides of the Atlantic. And we're now going to go on to talk a little bit more about corporate activity, starting first with M&A. Moving on now to the specifics of some uh, deal data and, and analysis on some of the corporate activity we saw during December. First of all, just some high level numbers and, and some key takeaways. So we, we registered a total of 76 deals on the Megabyte database uh, during December, and that was up uh, from 54, so a 40% increase, as I mentioned earlier, on December 2019, and a 25% increase on what was a relatively low month, actually, in, in November this year, last year, sorry. In terms of the sort of key themes we've seen around corporate activity generally, within M&A, enterprise software continues to be a substantial driver of activity with a significant number of larger PE-backed um, acquirers in the market, as well as some quoted, uh, some co quoted acquirers that I'll, I'll touch on as well that were active during December. Uh, digital consolidation is a significant factor now. Uh, we saw that starting off really with, um, when I say digital, I'm talking about digital platforms primarily. We started to see that as a factor with futures bid for GoCo, the parent company of GoCompare, and some other digital platforms in November. And then in December, we had uh, further activity in that regard, which I'll touch on. And interesting on the digital theme, we haven't yet seen any, um, any specifics around, <coughs> excuse me, around um, IPO activity within digital platforms, but we still expect that to be a major theme for 2021. Thirdly, in terms of key themes, corporate carve-outs, I think, is a really interesting one. We started to see that uh, emerge as a trend towards the end of last year. And essentially what I think's really happened is that, um, uh, you know, 2020 has been such a shock for everybody that uh, businesses have, have, have been able to and willing to really examine their core competencies, what they're good at, what they're not good at in terms of products and geographies, uh, both in terms of tech businesses and non-tech businesses, and have... Given, been given permission effectively by the markets and by investors to divest those things that are non-core. And we've seen that with um, Capita, most probably most high profile, but Equinity is also, Sage has been going through that process to a degree. Well, not to a degree, it has been going through that process and there was more deal flow with that during December. And that, that trend definitely seems to be gathering some momentum. I don't think I see it as a long-term trend. It's, it's a it's a reset, I think, um, uh, a COVID, a post-COVID, hopefully post-COVID uh, reset. But uh, I'll talk more about some of the deal flow we've seen. There's been lots of that in December. Um, and last year's is the, the the more more kind of evidence that SPAC money is coming to Europe. Here come the SPACs, as they say. For those of you who are not aware, a SPAC is a special purpose acquisition ca uh, company. It's a US invention, and uh, and it, uh, it it's a vehicle that raises a substantial amount of capital um, as a shell, effectively to uh, to spend to acquire businesses in a, in a very in a fairly fixed part of the market that's declared to investors at the time of IPO. Essentially, it's a vehicle to do a reverse takeover of one or more companies. And um, a lot of these are uh, focused on the technology sector. Not all by any means. A lot of them are focused on industrials and other areas that are looking for you know, um, cheaper assets that might have been damaged by COVID. But um, we are now seeing more of those. We are see we've seen tens of millions of dollars raised in those over the last few months in the US. And what's, what's significant, I think, is we're starting to see that money come to Europe, most notably with uh, the... Um, the, the acquisition by one of these vehicles of Pace, 6.7 billion pound deal, uh, you know, um, really substantial firepower these businesses have got, uh, these SPACs have got. And also interestingly, we're seeing, <coughs> excuse me, we're seeing uh, some of the uh, UK equivalents coming to the market now. We're seeing a few vehicles coming to the UK market in a different form, but similar objectives. So I'll touch on that.
So those are the key takeaways or the key themes, I think, for corporate activity during December. Looking at the specifics, starting first with M&A, 46 deals reg registered in December um, against 30 in the, same, um, in, the, in, the, in the same month in 2019. I said in November that I felt the low level of M&A activity was a bit of a blip um, that month, and I think that's certainly proved to be the case. Uh, uh, December saw um, uh, predominance of software and digital deals actually uh, and, and just taking that kind of um, that uh, enterprise software theme I talked about previously and looking at Sage first of all two divestments from Sage and also an investment which I think is interesting as well about the divestments are not and the, they're not necessarily about downsizing they're about focus and so Sage is divesting international businesses but acquiring or investing in this case in the in the in the UK um, very interestingly, uh, uh, divested Sage divested its Australasian business to Access Group, which is one of the most active acquirers in the UK market. So an interesting deal from that perspective. Ninety-five million pound acquisition for Access really gives it critical mass in in, in Australasia, which is which is great for them. Um, and Sage also uh, divested its Polish business to Mid Europa Private Equity. Um, Elsewhere, I mentioned in payments, uh, in, in software and digital platforms, uh, PaySafe is a substantial deal uh, to the SPAC, as I mentioned. Um, and uh, we've also seen quite a lot of interesting results and uh, growth capital deals in payments as well, which I'll touch on later. And in the separate video, I'll, I'll be publishing separately. or will be publishing separately. Um, elsewhere in software and digital platforms, I mentioned uh, the uh, GoCo and uh, the GoCo uh, uh, future deal in November, and we saw uh, another significant deal in that sector in December, which was Admiral divesting its Confused.com business to Zoopla in a 500 million pound deal. Future GoCo is a 600 million pound deal. So this is a this is a part of the market that's maturing, and the M&A activity is consolidation, as you'd expect, I guess, when you know these these businesses have been around for, for for more than a decade in many cases. So this consolidation, I guess, is a symptom of the of the uh, of the maturity of that part of the market. Also, sorry to go back, I missed one on uh, enterprise software. Very interesting that IdeaGen acquired. Huddle. Huddle's a business that's been around in the UK for some time <clears throat> in the collaboration space and um, was a bit of a rising star or wasn't, was perceived to be a rising star in the, in the immediately post dot com and um, was um, uh, really failed to get any significant traction, raised tens of millions of pounds. It, it's a solid business, but it really didn't get to where they, the investors had hoped. And, and they've, they've basically thrown in the towel and sold that for 28 million to IdeaGen. It's a, it's a reasonable exit, but not what they certainly what they would have hoped a few years ago. So I think that's a canter through the, the kind of significant deals, I think, within software. In, it, as I said, it's been a little bit quieter in ICT and digital services, but a couple of kind of key deals to mention. IMI Mobile Cisco is, 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 was, a, was a very significant deal in the sector. IMI Mobile in the mobile software space, and uh, the management team there has done a fantastic job of building that business um, over the last 10 years. A really cracking deal for shareholders, 48% uh, premium for that uh, to, the, to the share price immediately before the deal was announced. 541 million, 23 times current year EV EBITDA. And sad to see a strong business like that leave the UK market, but a great deal for shareholders. And on the private markets, um, in the M2M IoT space, Wireless Logic, a Montague-backed business, very successful uh, business that grew organically in the UK substantially and has been acquiring in the UK and in Europe um, for the last few years under Montague's watch. Um, Wireless Logic acquired Arkessa, which was a similarly acquisitive, a bit of an upstart really, you might think, in that space. Um, interestingly, Alcasa backed by ECI, Wireless Logic was originally backed by ECI, so you know there's that kind of circularity about it, which is kind of interesting. Um, but also Philip Cost, our, our, our lead analyst in this area, he could have, when he was commenting on that deal, said it was a bit of a, it was a bit of a marquee deal in this space because it's an acquirer acquiring another acquirer in the space, which is symptomatic of a maturing of that part of the market, although obviously still a good growth part of the part of the market. So fewer deals in in ICT services, but a couple of really interesting ones. Moving on to private equity, another very active month, 26 deals we registered across growth capital and mid-market and public to privates, uh, just one in, uh, in, in December of those public to privates uh, against 20 in December 2019. So good growth in this part of the market as well in terms of deal activity. In terms of growth capital continues to be very solid. We reckon about 300 million raised across our universe uh, in, in, in December, which was similar to November and up substantially on the year previously. So continuing strong dynamics in growth capital. A couple of key deals to mention, uh, Go Cardless, uh, you know, one of the real success stories of the UK digital payment space, uh, raised another 72 million sterling, primarily for product development in its open, for its open banking product. Uh, Micro Blink, 
in data extraction, I keep talking about data, data, data. So much venture capital money is going into, into the data side of things, particularly around B2B at the moment. Um, and that's a really fascinating space. Not all, of them, not all of them will succeed, of course, but it is, it is real chapter two stuff, chapter two of the cloud era. Um, and then interestingly, a couple of HCM software and peripheral uh, area deals. Hi Bob raising 25, 52 million, iMedis raising 37 million. Um, um, Hi Bob in the HCM software space. It's interesting, there's a lot of consolidation going on in the HCM software space um, with access and others buying those businesses. But there's also money, new money coming in in terms of growth capital, which is kind of really interesting. iMedis is in payroll and, and tax compliance. So not, not HCM kind of high HR software, but in that kind of broader category. Agree. Again, very active in later stage private equity, 10 deals in sell secondary buyouts, management buyouts, and in uh, P2P, uh, against eight in the same period last year. So again, good growth in, in transaction volumes in that part of the market. A couple of key secondary buyouts to mention. The, my favorite, I think, was Exclaimer um, Insight. Uh, this was Living Bridge, great exit for Living Bridge, who backed Exclaimer. Many of you will know uh, Heath Davies, who runs Exclaimer now, took over the reins there last year, uh, previously of ClearSwift, previously of um, Alterian and, 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 and others. Um, known to many of you, I'm sure. Uh, Exclaimer is the simplest of businesses in many ways. It provides email footer software to make sure that you've got the right footers, you've got all compliant. It's very simple in some senses, but simple things make a lot of money sometimes, and the metrics around Exclaimer are extraordinary. Um, and uh, Insight paid good price for that, and it was a great exit for Living Bridge. We think it was about a 200 million deal. Five Arrows acquiring text help, 150 million deal, we think. And interestingly, that's in the sort of healthcare space, but I think that. Um, uh, what's interesting about that deal is that the LDC only held that business for 18 months. So there are private equity investors out there that are really taking advantage of the uh, the high um, the kind of the, the the high demand for assets at the moment to exit much earlier perhaps than they would have otherwise done. Probably the most significant private equity deal outside of Talk Talk, which I'll come back to, uh, is uh, the. ESS deal, the divestment of capita. There's been much talk of that over the last uh, few weeks and months. Who would buy it? How much would it go for? Would it be 500 million? Would it be 300 million? In the end, it was Montague was last man standing uh, at 400 million. And, and we found out um, in, in something of a kind of blaze of glory why they were the last man standing, because they've also managed to invest in parent pay, uh, which although we suspect probably had some impact from, uh, from the COVID because it's a transaction based software business that focuses on schools. So, uh, you know, that, that may well have been a factor. Fundamentally, an incredibly strong business parent pay, owner managed still at some scale. Uh, so uh, the combination of uh, you know, a lot of press about why ESS was a struggling business, losing market share under capita, but uh, it seems to me that's a really, really innovative deal that Montague have done there. Uh, it'd be fascinating to see how that develops to put those two businesses together. Um, and uh, you know, we'll see how that, that, that goes. Lastly, as I mentioned on the private equity, but definitely not least, the biggest deal uh, in PE uh, in December was the Take Private, still going on, the P2P of um, uh, Tosca, sorry, of Talk Talk by Tosca, Tosca Fund, Penta and Charles Dunstan. And, uh, you know, that is an interesting deal. Yeah, it's an interesting deal anyway. It's a big Take Private, so it's interesting. But it's a, it's a, it's the exception that proves the rule on valuation at the moment with, we reckon, about seven times current year EV EBITDA compared to an average, as I said earlier, of 13 and a half times for ICT and digital services and over 20 for the sector as a whole. Now, I know Talk Talk's an underperforming business, but that does feel like, that feels like a very uh, kind of low multiple. And... Um, you know, it's going to be fascinating to see what those people do with it because you'll probably be aware or you may be aware that um, uh, Tosca and Penta were the, the, the teamed up to take Daisy Private a few years back when that was an undervalued asset on the market. Not a dissimilar, uh, not a dissimilar situation in some ways. And they've uh, recently, <coughs> uh, Daisy has recently been going through a process of, of, of separating its, its largest businesses into different divisions. And we are uh, expecting a uh, an investment by inflection into one of the larger parts of Daisy uh, DWS that's been widely rumored and, and probably will close sooner. We, we think it's a well sourced rumor, and um, uh, you know it'll be very interesting to see what the same people, the same investors do with Aries. I have to say, uh, say as well, providing debt to both bit, to both deals uh, with with Talk Talk as a private business, is assuming that is, that goes through. So that's a wrap up on PE. Very interesting, very busy month. Lastly, on capital markets, quieter, I guess. I mean, obviously, we talked earlier. I talked earlier about the uh, the um, uh, the 
the strength of share prices. So it's been very vibrant from that perspective, but not a huge amount of fundraising going on in terms of uh, follow-on private, uh, public offerings and IPOs. A couple of interesting ones, IdeaGen raised 49 million uh, part to part fund the huddle deal. So that's getting back to some normal fundraising activities you'd expect to see in the sector. And Sensign Health raising 25 million to fund its growth of that business in AI healthcare. Um, the, the, the most significant deal, I guess, was the uh, was the listing of Bytes Group, Bytes Technology Group, which I've talked quite a bit about on on this show over the last couple of months. Uh, large UK reseller in broad software and also in uh, in security services, security products. Um, IPO got away in, in 18 times EV EBIT, broadly where we expected it to be. Pretty punchy multiple, even in the context of uh, of the current market environment, uh, where valuations are obviously pretty punchy. Um, but you know, Softcat sits there in the twenties of, of an EV bit dar. So you know, it's 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 a very help, helpful comp for the likes of Bytes Group. And the shares went from two seventy at the listing to three thirty today. So they've done well post listing. So uh, hopefully that'll continue on its path successfully as a public company. So, so I think that's a wrap up of the deal flow. Just to, before I wrap up this part of the uh, of this part of the uh, of the barometer this month, talk a little bit about uh, about the outlook. And I think that uh, the risk of being repetitive, we think twenty twenty one will be a uh, a very uh, a very strong uh, period for corporate activity across all three areas we look at: private equity, M and A, um, and and. Uh, um, uh, capital markets. We think the the, the digital aspect to, to we still think digital is going to be significant in, uh, in in capital markets IPOs. I don't expect there to be a flood of more traditional software businesses because uh, because the just the demand is so high in private equity that, that I think will still be the the preferred route. But in digital businesses, we've talked about Deliveroo, Trustpilot, Pension B, and others uh, apparently coming to the market next year at pretty punchy multiples. So that feels like it's a theme that's still gathering momentum. Dark Trace is probably the exception that proves the rule on software. Where we've, that's gone a bit quiet, but we're still expecting to see that come to the London market during 2021. Um, in in M&A, you've just got you've got seemingly every day we hear a new business that's re-energising its M&A strategy. So you've got real demand. Clearly, you've got bags of funding there from um, private equity as well as the capital markets, as evidenced by deal flow during uh, December. And uh, you've got um, you've got very willing buyers and willing sellers, particularly as we've got in the first quarter of this year, likely uh, changes to the uh, capital gains tax regime in the budget, which is going to probably create some a mini bubble in M and A this 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 quarter. Um, so uh, and then in, in in private equity, the proverbial wall of private equity money has not gone anywhere. There's a limited amount of of assets, but as digital uh, continually makes its march from pure tech through into uh, business services and tech-enabled services, that really feels like it's where the private equity deal flow is going to expand into broader digital. So there's plenty to go for in that space, I think, overall. So we think a very strong uh, a very strong uh, deal activity in 2021. Valuations is a really interesting one because you know, you've got in the US, you you have got a sense, and there is starting to be some commentary around a bubble forming, and certainly the volume of the volume of 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 of, of IPOs and these SPACs feel very bubble market to me, uh, definitely. Um, and some of the valuations around some of the recent IPOs have been eye watering. Uh, but fundamentally, we don't. Uh, yes, and things are stretched here in the UK in many cases. It, you know, EV EBITDA multiples for software at an average of twenty six feels too high. Having said that, I don't, it certainly doesn't feel like 2000. I lived through that, as I'm sure many of you did. It doesn't feel like that at all quite yet. But the direction of travel is starting to feel a bit like that, and that is a little bit of a worry. Fundamentally, with, with interest rates where they are and, and looking like they're going to stay very low for now, it's not a short-term concern for us, for me. Um, but it is, it is becoming more of a concern that we're heading into a bubble. Uh, but these things you know, take time to play out, so we'll see. For now, feel set fair. Activity, I think, will be very high. So that's it for the wrap up and, and, and the roundup of corporate activity and the trends thereon. Uh, I, as I said, I will be producing a different video today of uh, the, uh, the uh, company financials and trading performance of the companies we track here at Megabyte. But uh, that's it for this video. Uh, stay safe and thank you very much for watching.